welcome all students to this session experiment for designing web in string by mail experiment. This experiment is part of laboratory in physics 1, 014203, Department of Physics, Faculty of Science, Physician University. I am Sor Sakpan Pak, your host today. Let's start with the objective for this experiment. So the three main objectives. Firstly, to study standing wave in string. I will explain in the detail and derive like how you get the standing wave under the superposition condition. Secondly, to determine the wave frequencies. After you know the length of the string, you know the number of the loop of the standing wave. You can convert back to the uh, wavelength. By that, you can use the knowledge of the uh, string tension to find wave frequency. Further, to investigate the relationship between the linear density of string and wavelength. So, if you change the type of the string, change the linear density of the string, so that. You can compare the effect of the frequencies and the wavelength to happen. So this is the overall of the standing wave on male experiment that we're going to perform in this session. So you need to set up the experiment like this and clear the standing wave by the by adjusting the, the tension, so you can loading the weight at the end of this string. You can see the, the loop that happened to the standing wave. Loading mass exactly like this. So the number of the loop is depend on the mass, the weight that you load into the hook. So I will start with the introduction first. What the application? that the closest to you about the standing web. So it's all music instrument. The obvious sample is on the keter string. This is one of the example. You can adjust the tension of the string or changing the type of the string to have the different frequencies, different harmonics. And this is represent the loop that happened. So this Relate to the frequency increment or in a higher harmonics. You can also slide your finger along the fret of the guitar to change the frequency. Also, the harmonic can be specific at some distance. Also, you can change the note to the higher note or the higher pitch of the same note. This is how. You use the knowledge of the standing wave in guitar instruments. So how wave propagate on string? So as you know, any characteristic wave have some relation of the velocity, frequencies, and the wavelength. And what is can be explained in the wave fouling on the string. So if we have the mass of the string and recognize just only the tiny portion and seeing this as a particle. So yeah, this particle has the mass delta m. So when the string oscillating like this, so this mass moving up and down with an acceleration. So we we'll use this type of the information and derive with the second law of Newton. So by this we can uh, using the background knowledge to, to explain how we propagate. And this is the scheme method showing the way that wave of the string happen at some moment. So you can see the relation of the force and the tension that Used for like holding the string, you, you have the tension at two ends, right? 
And with this curve, you can use the tabulation try to get the point that the, the proportion of the force related to the tan theta, which is related to the direction along the y and x axis as well. So with this relation, you can convert to the total net force when the force F1 and F2 act to this mass. When you sum it up, you can link to the second law of motion. This is the Newton's law of motion. And the mass you concern is this delta M, like a particle, this point. For the acceleration, is what you get the change along the y-axis. So this is the acceleration that you uh, differentiate with the terms. So this is the diff two terms with the terms. So after you change this term to this direction, this is time of the second order derivative in the limit form. So you can uh, change to the form to this part. So finally, this type of equation is exactly the wave equation is exactly one over velocity square the, the the constant in front of this term is the proportional of the velocity square by that you can have the relation of the linear density of the string with the string tension so we define velocity in a normal form, in addition to this frequency and wavelength relation. So with these two equations, you can make a relation of the tension and the frequencies. After you know how to derive the velocity due to the uh, string tension and the mass of the string, which is I call the linear density, this term, so this is what, like, we, we use that information to explain the frequencies that happen in different scenarios. This is what happened in the guitar. But what we can observe, we can transfer the knowledge and test with the male experiment that we're going to do today. So the, the key idea of the male is you change the tension of the string by loading the mass. It's like you adjust the tension of the guitar string so that you can quantify how much of the tension you increase. With that, you can see the chain of the wavelength, the lambda here, by counting the number of the loop. You know the lambda so that use the V equal to f lambda so you can know the frequencies so this is how you use the male experiment to tune in the tension and if you change the type of string you can change the linear this, this is the same phenomenon that happened of the standing wave and you can observe clearly on male experiment so as I said before, you have to load the mass to adjust the string tension. And by that, you can count the loop that happened. As you can see that this is the uh, superposition of the wave that's traveling. So from this altering source, this creates the wave to propagate on this direction. With the fixed point, wave can propagate back. So when, when it's superimposed, at some point, create the maximum and minimum. So the maximum we call anti-node, and the minimum we call the node. The point from node to node, we can count it as a half of the wavelength, or lambda O2. By this information, we can define what the wavelength is it. Here is a definition. So you know the velocity from the de derived part, and then you convert to the frequency that is led to 
the way of light. You can adjust the tension, you can adjust the linear density. So this is the final relation. You, you just rearrange this term, square it up, and change to another size. So this is another type of the interesting relation. If you vary the tension, the wavelength also varies. What is it in the experiment part? So this is the equipment in going to use. So you have to connect the power supply that, that plug into our home uh, plug cable. And then that's going to transfer these 50 hertz frequencies to the motor. And this motor is going to oscillate with this frequency. So you have the loading mass in the hook so that you can adjust the string tension when this string passes through this pulley. So at the point that string cross, we call this as a fixed point. Like here, you have the fixed point over here. And with this oscillation, you will see at the right tension. So it causes the resonance and you will have the standing wave. So how you set up the experiment, you connect the power supply to the motor and you tighten the rope onto the end of the motor and cross through the pulley and hang with the hook. So this hook can be loaded with this mask. So what you're gonna do, you try to adjust the mask at the end until you see the loop happen. Is. And how you count the loop in this case, because at the first loop, there's some uh, unreliable condition can be happening. It can be longer or shortened. To be precise on counting the same size of the loop to de determine the frequency, make sure you count off a loop rather than the one that's closing, closest to the motors. So, for example, in this case, you see five loop but you're gonna count as a four and you determine the length between this four loop for finding the right the wavelength right after you know the wavelength you will get the frequency right after the tension with this information and the linear density from the way that you measure the rope and divide by the distance. So there are uh, several experiments you have to perform, but how to do that? Uh, we suggest you to start with having the counted loop from seven. That means you have to load the mass until you see eight loop happen, but you're gonna count only seven here and measure the distance. Try to play with this hook and loading weight. You add mass as you want. So after you see the, the seven loop that you can cut, now you measure or weight this hook and the loading weight. You can use with the balance that we prepare for you. And then by knowing the weight of this hook, you know the, the string tension. And when you use the ruler or, or band from measure this length, you will know the half wavelength size. You repeat this type of experiment for different condition. So after you have seven counted loop, so you need six counted loop, five, four, three. So you, what you can change this just by changing the, the string tension so you can add or remove the loading wave just play around and see what is going to be the right condition to be able to see the loop the loop can be difficult to observe but make sure you have the right tension and you have the right linear density to see the loop for sure so this is 
the final step, like you you want to have the count the loop that can be count for three. So again, you play with the loadings, make sure you can see three loops and then you wait it. And you record the length that you have three loops and the weight that you measure with the balance. So this is an example of the loop that I can count for four. I will show you here. This is one, two, three, four, five that happened, but I'm gonna count only four and I measure the distance. And this is this is the way that make this having a four loop that I can count, right? You balance this and record it. You measure this and record it. This is an example. So after you finish all different number of loops, that means you have the information of the wavelength and you have the information of the string tension, which is come from the mass that you weighed up. With this term, you can have the linear relation between tension and the lambda square. Please plot this on the graph plot that you provide or feel free to use an Excel and fit with the linear trends. So by this, if you fit the linear trend like this, you can find the slope and slope can approximate the average frequency of this string. So by knowing this average information, and initially you can calculate the frequencies from the knowledge of the lambda and tension and the linear densities, you can compare these two set of the information. So this is the example of your record data sheet. Make sure you fill in all in the form all information and plot the curve into this graph sheet. Right, and you see the number of the loop that you require for the small string and large strings. So, if you finish all in the small string, record it and change to the large one. But I recommend start with the large one first because it's easily to be observed. And then, when you finish all from seven to three loops, change string to the smaller one and play around. That's everything for this session. Good luck for your experiment. Thank you.